Hey everyone, welcome into Next Round Preps. John Lunsford, Jerry Young here, and Jerry, we are heading into the meat of the season here as we get to the end. Three more weeks of region play for most teams, four left for some, and uh, boy, the playoff brackets are slowly starting to take shape. You know, if you're a football fan, or a sports fan, I mean, here you are in October, you got baseball playoffs going yep. on, you got basketball about to start. Uh, in high school, you got volleyball wide open. You got track, fall track season going on. Uh, and of course, football in all categories, whether it be high school, college, or now the NFL is far enough into the season to see how they're going to do. I'm telling you, this is, this, October's got to be my most favorite month of all. It's up there. Of course, you forgot hockey, the greatest sport, also. There you go. Being in there, go Preds. They lost last night. But, um, Anyway, yeah, it's a, this is a fun time of season. And, of course, for me, this means every weekend, and I started it this weekend, I sat there behind my computer looking at every single team and every single region and every single classification to pump out those brackets. They're all at alepreps.com. If you want to follow along as we do, kind of, we'll kind of sort of mention where teams are. Nothing's really set yet. Technically, some spots can get locked up this week in some six-team regions because with the new 7A system, it used to be basically eight regions of eight teams. Now it's kind of – all over the place. There's some with six, some with uh, seven, some with eight, and even some with nine. Right. Um, so it's kind of all over the place when it, in uh, regards to that. But we we'll kind of talk about the brackets as we go along here, and kind of you know the scores right now from last week, and then looking ahead to week seven, um, kind of where teams fall. But let's get into some games from last week. Uh, we'll start down south. Bayside Academy, they fall to T.R. Miller, 31-17. to um, Thought it might be a little closer game than that. A couple scores there, though. T.R. Miller getting a big win down there. I did, too. I thought, uh, you know, we've talked about uh, Trotter the whole time, Coach Trotter. I, I saw an interview with him, and it was kind of shocking to me. Even though he's been in coach, you know, uh, Barrett went to California and coached. He went to North Carolina and coached. He went back to high school at Briarwood. You know, he's been from college pro and high school. Now he's head coach down there. But he's building that team. I'm telling you, Bayside Academy is going to be a very good football team in the future. It's only his first year. Yeah, you're right. He's already got him a, a playoff contender there, but you know, T.R. Miller, they're always successful down there. Valley, they went to Central Clay County. Central Clay County, one of the best teams in the state. They were all over Valley. This is actually a matchup of two good records, but doesn't look like it by the score. 47 nothing. Central gets the win over Valley. Scottsboro and Gunnersville uh, fighting for uh, top of that region there. Gunnersville gets the win 20-6. Leeds at Southside Gaston, a little bit of an upset here. Thought Weeds, uh, Weeds, Leeds would uh, be about a touchdown favorite in this one, but Southside Gaston getting the 23 13 win. So now that uh, sets up Moody and Southside Gaston is fighting for that top spot, although Moody and Leeds still have to play, obviously, as well. Another team in 5A that uh, kind of had surpri surprised some people through the first half of the season. That was the John Carroll Cavaliers, though falling to Pleasant Grove, getting their first loss of the season. You know, I said this a couple of weeks ago. I didn't think John Carroll really played anybody. Well, here you go. You're playing this good. You know, next week they got Ramsey, yep. you know, if you look on down. So the meat of their schedule is just now coming up. Here's what John Carroll can do. John Carroll can make a statement. I mean, if they come in here and beat Pleasant Grove, I mean, uh, 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 Ramsey. Ramsey next week. And I know I'm getting ahead of myself a little bit. But looking at this one loss just still puts them at three and one in the region. So – you know, this is a good football team. John Carroll's really come out of their shell this year. I'm glad for them, and I just think that uh, that, that loss to Pleasant Grove, they need to regroup, need to use that loss as something to build on now and see what they can do. And look, Pleasant Grove and Ramsey are two of the top teams in 5A, so you lose those two games, nothing to be uh, ashamed of. For me, it's going to come down to Winona when they play them to see if they can get that third spot or if they fall all the way to fourth. Speaking of Winona, they fall to Ramsey 65-14. to Boy, Winona's that, that fourth playoff team there, along with uh, John Carroll Ramsey and Pleasant Grove. But uh, whew, Ramsey taking it to them there, hosting that one and winning 65-14 between the battle of two uh, city schools. St. Paul's, they fall to Spanish Fort down in 6A Region 1, 35-6. Spanish Fort looking strong for that second seed there. St. Paul's trying to hang on to get that fourth seed potentially in uh, Region 1, another nine-team region. So they still got a lot of work to do in that region. Up in 6A Region 6, Pell City and Oxford – I thought I, I, you know, go through and do basically a point spread, what I would think it would be, strictly based on the numbers. And Pell City now has zero wins because took take the center point went away because of forfeit. Right. It's a whole different story. Which, by the way, they're appealing. They are, of course. Um, I had Oxford as a 35-point favorite in this one. Instead, 28-25, Pell City leading this game early on. Oxford ends up coming back to get the win. But, 
I mean, I guess Rush Probst's team is kind of sort of starting to get there a little bit. Yeah, well, you knew he was going to be successful. One way or the other, he's going to be successful, and he is. Here's the difference in that game. I went back and looked up some stats. Oxford threw the ball for 158 yards. Pell City threw it for 31. Rushing was about equal, but that's where the difference was. That extra 100 yards in there is what made that score what it is. But, yeah, they gave him a good game, three-point game, good ball game for Oxford. And uh, Pell City, they technically have no wins right now because of the forfeit that they're appealing, but uh, still alive for the playoffs. It's kind of hard to say. How does a team with no wins? It's 0-6 right now, alive for the playoffs. Because they beat center point in the field, assuming there's no forfeits moving forward, um, they, they still got a chance. Oxford, though, that's the big story there. Oxford and Clay Chaltville uh, will be the matchup we're all looking forward to. Shades Valley, meanwhile, they fought a center point 26-20. Center point, the one team Pell City had beaten on the field, um, but they get the win over Shades Valley. And now center point trying to fight to see if they can maybe get up in that second seed, but I would probably project them in that three seed. Um, moving up into region uh, eight, I believe, Muscle Shoals at Hartzell. Uh, we had uh, some people <laughs> reach out and it's like, hey, you got to talk more about North Alabama football. Well, there was a good one last week. North, uh, Muscle Shoals and Hartzell went to double overtime before Muscle Shoals finally pulled it out. Yeah, and Hartzell threw an interception in the third, second overtime. That was the difference in the ball game. So, uh, yeah, you know, that game was back and forth. We expected that. These are probably two of the best teams around in that, in that classification. I just really – um, you know, Hartzell plays tough, but, you know, it's got to be heartbreaking to get to the second overtime and throw an interception. Muscle Shoals has always been really, really good. Um, but Clay Chaltville, uh, Pinson when uh, Bo Nix was there, Spanish Fort with all the talent they've had. Um, they've always had really good teams, but just can't quite get past those. Now you've added Mountain Brook into the mix with them dropping back down to 6A. Right. It's tough in that north for uh, Muscle Shoals to break through, but – Getting a big win over Hartzell, who, like you said, two of the top teams in that uh, classification. They still are two of the top teams in that classification, but Muscle Shoals winning by six in overtime, 55-49. to 49. Used to have defenses that if they gave up a touchdown, it was shocking uh, in some of their games. But a shootout there as Muscle Shoals, the Trojan comes out on, Trojans come out on top. Um, Hillcrest, Tuscaloosa, big winners over Central in Region 4, 49-14. In that one, Briarwood and Helena, much, much closer game than I guess we would have expected. I thought Helena might could have run away with this one, 28-14. The Huskies get the win, stay on top in Region 3, but Briarwood looking strong there as well. Uh, Gardendale, they beat Jackson Owen to get their first win of the season, 58-12. Um, and Enterprise, Ooh, Enterprise and Prattville. I want to tell you, Enterprise is a good football team. Pravel's a bad football team. I mean, they just got stomped, and they had their chance right there to really, you know, play a game that would consider that they're at least trying to get better toward the end of the season. But it didn't get much easier. I mean, they still got to face Auburn. They still got to face Central Phoenix City. I don't know what the bracket says, but Prattville's out of it. They are not in it. They, they will not be in right. it, uh, the way things are trending right now. However, two teams fighting for position in the bracket. Central trying to win yet another region title. Dothan been playing pretty good, trying to work their way maybe into that second seed. They go to Central, though, and lose 48-14. to 14. This is all Central's region for number one. Really, the battle is for number two at this point. And Auburn, usually the team that you have sitting there at the top two, and they barely squeaked out a win. They did over Opelika, a one-point game. You know, Auburn has had some one-point games. Uh, double overtime, uh, 28-27 against Dothan. Um, then they've had some blowouts, but Ramsey only 13-7 to last week, and now a one-point game over Opelika. Auburn needs to uh, hope that – I have not got a report on their starting quarterback if he's coming back this year. Last I heard, he wasn't. So, Auburn, that's where their weakness is right now, and they are beatable. We'll see how they uh, they got an open week this coming up week, and then of course in a couple of weeks the big showdown. They are beatable, and uh, pulling up my bracketology here, you can always go to that alpreps dot com. Um, looking at region two, so I wrote. Look, Auburn has decided three one-point games, which is what's deciding the region right now. Enterprise beat Auburn by one. You mentioned the Dothan game being a one-point game, and then this one game, one-point game with Opelika. As of right now, Enterprise, they're technically a half game down because they haven't played as many region games. Odd number region means not everybody's going to play the same region schedule. Enterprise is at three and one because they beat Auburn by one. Auburn's at number three because they're four and one, have that loss, but then they beat Opelika, who's sitting at three and two. Dothan right now out of the playoffs because of that bad loss to Central Phoenix City. Still plenty of work to do, still can work their way in. But right now, Dothan out, and we mentioned Prattville, 
there's way too much to overcome as good as everybody else is playing for uh, Auburn to get in there and sneak into the play or for, for Prattville to sneak into the playoffs. Up north, another one point game, 31 30. James Clemens beat Spartman. Basically, James Clemens only has to win, I think, one or two more games to lock up this region, but that was their toughest competition. Beating Spartman also already beat Bob Jones, who's sitting there as a playoff team in that battle of Madison early in the season. So James Clemens looking good, beating Spartman by one, 31 30 this past weekend. Moving into Region 3. Um, the region we kind of keep the, the biggest eye on, Hoover. They seem to have righted the ship. 62-14 to 14 winners over Oak Mountain now. Oak Mountain's the, the last place team in this region, but Hoover hadn't put up 62 points on anybody no. uh, this whole season. Their one win was a, a close win. We're only put up 28 against Spain Park. Meanwhile, Spain Park, they beat Tuscaloosa County, kind of bringing Tuscaloosa County back down to earth a little bit. 35-14, Hoover and County play this week. We'll talk about that in a second to determine that fourth place. Vestavia looking strong again, 45-21 over Chelsea. And they take on Hewitt Trustville, who fell to Thompson, 40-14. to We were at that one uh, on the call for that. And look, I thought it might be a little closer game than – it was. Ultimately, Thompson ends up winning by 26 points. And, you know, I think Vest Davis got a good chance this week as well to take down Hewitt from what we've seen from all these uh, games against Thompson. I agree. I think Thompson had their best game of the year. I really do. Everything was clicking. Uh, McGuire, the kicker, came back after missing that one the week before uh, to send it in overtime. He came back to kick two 40-plus field goals, drove the ball in the end zone almost every time on the kickoffs. It was just a well-rounded ball game, not just talking about the kicking. Offense played good. Defense played good. Hewitt Trust was a good football team. So, yeah, and we're going to talk about the Hewitt Trustful Vestavia game coming up on the second half of the show. But, yeah, Thompson played good. Big wins for Thompson, Spain Park, Vestavia, and Hoover. But uh, Hewitt's still fighting for position. We'll talk about that coming up as well as a big matchup between Hoover and Tuscaloosa County and a lot of other big matchups as slowly but surely the brackets are starting to take place. And we'll have it all for you, ALPreps.com, and, of course, right here on Next Round Preps, which is presented by Shepherd Equipment. It is. I want to tell you about Shepherd Equipment, S-H-E-P-H-E-R-D.com, shepherdequipment.com. It's where you want to go. Listen, you need land clearing. You need a road built, maybe some slag or gravel put down on it you need debris hauled off you need 20 acres cleared Um, you need a dumpster in your driveway for a project you're doing they can do all of that they have dumpster equipment bush hogging they cut brush they clear land uh, and just a fantastic company a lot of different aspects of what they do let's say you got a deck on the back of your house been there you need to tear it down but you don't know what to do with all that debris they'll come out they'll tear it down and oh shed they'll tear it down they'll haul it off for you they do all that instead in, in addition to land clearing so you want to easiest way to find out what they do is go to shepherdequipment.com s-h-e-p-h-e-r-d shepherdequipment.com thanks so much to shepherd equipment all right we'll be back we'll look ahead to week seven uh which will actually be the eighth week of the season a lot of big matchups we mentioned that big ones between hewitt and mistavia and a lot of other matchups when we get back plus our milo's player of the week right here on next round preps Have you or a loved one been diagnosed with mild cognitive impairment, which is brain changes that are starting to interfere with your life? Did you know researchers have proven that these brain changes can be slowed down or reversed in many people that routinely exercise their brain? At the Karen Thrive Foundation, we specialize in helping you understand the specific areas of the brain that have changed and develop a brain health plan, including cognitive exercises, adaptive approaches, and helpful technology to proactively stay ahead of your brain wellness. Visit www.karenthrive.org for more information. We've partnered with Who Is Coffee to create the next round blend. Available in light, medium, and dark roast. 100% Arabica beans. Specialty coffee roasted on demand. Available in whole bean or ground for drip pods. Espresso and coarse ground for French press. Go to nextround.store to get a link to pre-order today. Everyone that pre-orders will be entered to win a prize pack with coffees, shirts, hats, and tumblers. Nextround.store for the next round blend. back in the next round preps time to look ahead to week seven of the football season officially it will be the eighth week so uh, a lot of teams are wrapping up their final three games they're going to take that week 10 by but a lot of important games when it comes to region play um 
T.R. Miller, they are at Escambia County. Uh, both these teams fighting for playoff position. It's super close right now. T.R. Miller, St. Michael, Bayside Academy, Escambia County, and Satsuma fighting for three spots in 4 Region 1. Five teams are. Um, so Jackson looking the best down there. But uh, T.R. Miller at Escambia County to decide this. Got T.R. Miller as a pretty big favorite there, but uh, we'll see what happens. West Blockton at American Christian in 4A Region 3. West Blockton trying to actually solidify a spot. Um, they're currently out due to losing to Sipsy Valley last week. We're trying to get in the playoffs. ACA, they're always uh, you know, a, a strong team going into the playoffs. Um, we talked about Bibb County. Um, they are currently winning the region. ACA sitting there at 3-1, and one, but they have to host a very good Montevallo team. Yeah, Montevallo, by the way, John, just a little interesting fact. The last two games they played, they've won 21-20. to 20. <laughs> Kind of kind of a, a interesting little thing. Blake Borden, the, the, the coach there, has got them going. Their only loss was to West Blockton, and that was 10-7. to 7. So, Montevallo is playing really, really good football. Now, we've talked about Bibb County all year. Their only loss was to Andalusia. But uh, I believe that Bibb County takes control of the region with a win. Yeah, that'll put them in first. And I don't know that it'll definitely lock it up, but it'll basically lock it up for them. ACA will be two. West Blockton then can move into third. And then Montevallo could potentially drop all the way back to fourth, like you mentioned with that loss. Um, Corner, they're at Oak Grove. There currently is are, are four teams. Corner is at four and zero. Oh, Oak Grove, and I don't remember the two other two off the top of my head. They're sitting at three and one, all fighting for first place in this region. Both are still alive for the region title. Corner, of course, leads it being unbeaten right now, but uh, they got to go to Oak Grove, and right now it's one v four in four A uh, Region Five. There, Scottsboro, they're at Sardis. Both are likely in, but both fighting behind Gunnersville in five A Region Seven. But a battle of uh, two five and one teams there. Scottsboro uh, looking pretty good. I like them in this game over. For Sardis and then let's move into uh, that region with Ramsey 5A region 5 Ramsey we mentioned how good they've been John Carroll losing their first game but they now they have each other yeah and John Carroll you know like us we're doubters right I mean traditionally John Carroll gets to this point in the season this is when John Carroll can can change those doubters into believers can they pull off a win against Ramsey? Unlikely, but they can do it. We'll see how they play Friday night. Yeah, look, I, I was a doubter as a Homewood alum, and they, they went in and beat Homewood that first week of the season. So uh, that made me a little bit more of a believer. Still overall looking really good 5-1 and one in the season. Ramsey 5-2, and two, both those coming out of region to Parker and uh, Auburn stepping up in classification. BC Rain down south, they are heading to UMS Wright. UMS Wright actually in better position because Viger, when they announced this past weekend the Pell City forfeit, they also announced a, a Viger forfeit as well so uh, UMS right now sitting at three and one in the region instead of two and two in region one uh, so win here will put them in good position for at least second BC rain still fighting for fourth they're sitting at two and two um, and so they're fighting with a team like Viger to get that fourth spot with Tumka as we move into 6a they are at Carver Montgomery this is a battle for uh, position in 6a region two Pike Road also sitting there as well but uh, with Tumka three and one in region Carver three and oh in region if Carver wins this it'll come down to Carver and Pike Road for the region title I believe leave next week but in the next couple weeks for those two moving into 6a region six shades valley uh kind of back and forth season they're sitting at three and three but now they go to uh with an asterisk winless pell city i think rush probes gonna get his first legal win <laughs> you know as long as no eligible players yeah. are in there you know but shades valley and we know that the coaching staff at shades valley uh changed a couple of years ago and Reuben is going to do a good job there. I just, uh, you know, I, I don't know. I just think Pell City's been building, building, building. This might be the game puts them over the hump. This is basically the battle for that last spot. You have Clay obviously looking really, really, really strong. Oxford probably at two. Center point at three. And then you have Shades Valley and Pell City fighting for it. And like I said, it's so odd, but in my brackets, I have Pell City at 0 and 6. 0 and 3 in the region, still technically alive, strictly because they beat Center Point. Therefore, you know they can play good. They played Moody close. They played Leeds close. They played a lot of really close games that they've lost. Um, they are not to Clay Chalbo's level yet. They played Oxford close. Um, so there's still a chance, you know, that they can potentially work their way into the playoffs despite being 0 and 6. But it should be a good one there between Shades Valley and Pell City. Pinson also sitting out there trying to see if they can work their way in. Pell City and Pinson still have to play after this. Parker, they are at Mountain Brook. Big, big battle in 6A Region 5. Parker 6 and 1 on the season, unbeaten in region play. Mountain Brook 5 and 1 on the season, uh, losing to Vestavia only. They are at uh, 3 and 0 in region play. Basically, winner here is it gets first in 6A Region 5. Mortimer Jordan's been good. Gardendale's falling off. Gardendale still has a chance. 
chance to make it into the playoffs. They played minor this week, both sitting at one and two, both getting a win over Jackson Nolan. But if Gardner wins this, they were winless until this past week when they beat J.O. Now they can actually still get in. The winner here basically uh, has to win to get that fourth seed. Still some work to do, but big matchup between minor and Gardendale. This is at Gardendale in that matchup. Moving on to uh, Region 3, Pelham at Ben Russell. This is a Thursday night game. Pelham still technically alive. They're at 1-2 and two in region play. Um, ben Russell sitting at 2-1. and one. Homewood sitting at 2-1. and one. Briarwood at... Two and two, I think, because they lost to Helena last week. But yes. uh, either way, those are the three teams fighting for that final spot. Pelham, they're just on the outside right now, but they just need to get a win over a team like Ben Russell to uh, get in. But Ben Russell and Homewood and Briarwood are all kind of tied for second right there. Moving into Region 4, McAdory kind of back and forth this season. Hueytown kind of back and forth this season. Yeah. But they both are still battling for position in Region 4. Yeah, the battle of the western part of the city. You know, this has always been a traditional rival game. You know, uh, McAdory and Jess, uh, uh, Bessemer City now are right close to each other. It was just there when I played too, right. so I still say And it. then you got Bessemer and Hueytown. Those three teams go back and forth, whether or not the rivalry. But uh, Hueytown's won this series so far. They're ahead 29-12 to 12 in the games. They did have tied one. But um, it's just always a battle. As they're close together. It's – not as close as Spain Park and Oak Mound, but kind of similar thing. These little communities, not little communities, but these schools on that side of town, they love to play each other. I, you know, I got a coin flip on this. I don't know. I like Hueytown a little bit, but I also know the history of McAdory. They can play ball. They can. I'm leaning Hueytown in this one uh, as well. They're both sitting at three and one. Pretty much the winner of this one puts themselves in the driver's seat for second. The loser, even though they're only at three and two, technically still has a chance of missing, depending on what happens, because Central Tuscaloosa has been playing a lot better and they're in position. Bessemer City is in position. They have not been in the past. And then you have Northridge kind of sitting there as well. But uh, definitely a must win if you want to try to get that home field advantage in the playoffs for both Hueytown and McAdory. All right, moving up to class. 7A. Let's start up north in Region 4, the battle for second. Spartan at Bob Jones. They both now have lost to James Clemens. So James Clemens has a tiebreaker over both of them, whoever wins this, but the winner will be in good position for second place. I kind of lean Spartan in this one. They've had a better overall season, but uh, both really good teams from up in Region 4, both playoff teams right now 2 and 3 in Region 4. James Clemens, they are the uh, current region leader. I would probably lean them to just win out, win the region outright. Um, but Austin, they need to try to stay ahead of Huntsville and Florence. James Clemens, uh, Austin, big matchup there in Decatur. I agree. The Black Bears of Austin, they'll be ready to play. They're playing at Austin. James Clemens, by the way, you know, their two losses muscle shows in Mountain Brook, so yep. both of them are out of region play, and you mentioned that. They're 4-0 in the region, so, you know, they're sitting right in the catbird seat right there, but for some strange reason, I like Austin in this game. Definitely I, a winnable game for Austin, 100%. I think so, too. And, hey, if that happens, then the winner of the Sportman Bob Jones game, they only need one more slip-up. Now, I know you're praying for slip-up and then slip-up again, but uh, the winner of that still technically would be alive for the region title if that were to happen, and uh, Austin were able to pull that upset. Um, down south, we have mentioned how good Dothan and Enterprise have been this season, both trying to solidify a playoff spot against each other. Yeah, and, you know, I don't have too much to say about this other than I've been preaching all year that I think, you know, Dothan's such a good team. I just, uh, you know, it's, it's going to come down. Enterprise is playing really, really well. I, I think Enterprise would probably be favored in this game, but um, – you know, I just think Dothan can make a statement, right? Yeah, home field for Enterprise will help them. You're right. Uh, obviously, they're, they're kind of the two teams removed from the rest of uh, that, you know, kind of Montgomery, Auburn, Opelika, Phoenix City area. They're kind of, you know, further south. And, um, you know, I, I I do like Enterprise probably in this one. They're technically with a better record right now. And if that happens, then Dothan, they're already kind of sitting on the outside. Uh, they're fighting for position with Opelika. But uh, a loss here for Dothan would really hurt them more than it would Enterprise when and it comes to playoffs. And i something, Wildcat Stadium is a hard place to play. Enterprise got a great stadium. Great they do. Facilities. They do. Um, so we'll see what happens with that one. Dothan at Enterprise in 7A Region 2. Let's move down to Region 1. Baker and Mary Montgomery. Not the two teams you typically would think would be competing for the region title. You think of a team like Fairhope, who's been up there, a team like Foley, who obviously has had a lot of talent as well. But this one right here, basically your region championship in Region 1. Yeah, I like Baker. Baker's been playing really well all year. 
I think Baker's the team to beat. Yeah, Mary Montgomery sitting at 7-0 in the region. Baker at 6 or excuse me, 7-0 uh, total, 4-0 in region. Baker 6-1, 4-0 in region. So they're both unbeaten. I'm kind of leaning Baker in this one as well. All right, up to region three, Chelsea and Spain Park. There is an outside chance, and I mean way outside, that Spain Park can still work their way in the playoffs given everything that we know right now in 7A Region 3. But they can uh, start with a win over Chelsea because here's the thing. They win. They go to 2-3. and three. The loser of Hoover County goes to 2-3. and three. You move their way, You're all of a sudden moving your way up into 5th, uh, potentially. And then because if County loses to Hoover, we're going to move on to that game too. Hoover at County. If County loses, they drop actually back behind Spain Park because Spain Park beat them. And so I'd say, you know, look, Tim Bukakis has slowly moved from the bottom up a little bit to fifth, even if he ends up finishing there, to where then, given the state of Hoover right now, they could potentially work their way into your Sam Thompson, Hewitt, Vestavia, and Spain Park, the other side of the city. I mean, just throwing that out there, it's a work in progress, Listen, I know. you got to get on the elevator, go down four floors, and then go outside for that to happen. But I <laughs> You agree. do, you do. But, uh, <laughs> you know, the, the other thing they need to happen, they need Hoover to lose the county. I mean, that's right. plain and simple. And uh, that's a matchup that I fully expect Hoover to win. I plugged all the numbers in. And despite the fact that Hoover's at 2-5 and five on the season and County's 4-2 and two on the season, they're tied in reach and play, it still spun out Hoover by 31 points. And I fully believe it. I fully believe that Hoover – I think Hoover's kind of on a revenge tour right now for how bad they played in that first half of the season. Only beating your rival by a touchdown, your only win. Um, they don't want to get embarrassed by Thompson. So if they can try to work things uh, around, get the wins, at least lock up that fourth playoff spot before they go into that Thompson game. Use that kind of as a measuring stick. Throw everything you can at a team like Thompson to uh, you know kind of shock the world a little bit. But, yeah. I mean, they're trying everything they can to work their way in the playoffs. Well, and they're going to get some momentum. And let's face it, they're probably going to beat Tuscaloosa County. They're going to have momentum going into the Thompson game. And remember, we're jumping ahead a couple of weeks, but they've beaten Thompson the last two years. They have. And this one's so, at the Hoover Met, so right. uh, we'll be at the Met call on that one. Uh, the big game, though, in Region 3 is Hewitt Trustful at Vestavia. Both these teams are 3-1 and one in region play. Both those losses coming to region leader Thompson. Uh, Vestavia, that was a 7-3 ball game for the majority of the game. And Thompson put it away late with some uh, some defensive stops, uh, a good drive at the end. But it really was a one-possession game, even though it ended up being a 21-3 win for Thompson. Hewitt Trussell, on the other hand, like you mentioned in, in the, the first half, Thompson probably played their best, most complete game. They absolutely took it to Hewitt Trussell, 40-14. to And because of that, this game being at Vestavia as well, I'm leaning to Vestavia. I am too. I think – well, here's what I think this game's going to come down to. It's going to come down to quarterback play. You got Peyton Floyd for Hewitt Trussell, uh, Josh Floyd's son. He is a great quarterback. On the other hand, you got Vestavia, you got John Paul Head, the senior, playing great as well. John Paul Head's probably a better runner than Peyton Floyd, but I think that which quarterback manages the game better, and of course we always say this, but it goes without saying which line controls the line of scrimmage too. But I think this is going to be the first score I look for on Friday night. When I'm looking at the scores, I want to see how this game came out. Oh, I, look, we're going to be sitting next to each other calling the Thompson Oak Mountain game, and not a lot to talk about there. We'll get, that, get to that in a second. But right. I'm going to be sitting on my phone the whole time like, oof. I it's, know. It's, 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 you know, 7 nothing. Oh, okay, it's 7-3. Yeah. Oh, it's 10-7. to seven. You know, let's say we just scored. I mean, it's going to be like that the entire night, keeping track of this one. Because here's what you do. So when you look at the bracket, on the, the right side where you have Region 3 playing Region 4, which, by the way, next year that starts changing. It's going to be a whole mess trying to keep up with that. But this year you're still going to have 1v2 and 3v4 for one more year. What's going to happen is you work your way into that second seed. You avoid Thompson. You go on the opposite side of the bracket from Thompson. Now, as it stands right now, let's say Vestavia wins, just for argument's sake. Let's say Vestavia wins because we're kind of leaning that way, and I got them favored in this game. They win. They're going to play Bob Jones in the first game, the way things are now, at Vestavia. So, number one, you get to host instead of having to go up to Huntsville to play your first game by winning this. Second, your second game is going to be against either James Clemens or penciling in Hoover for right now as your four seed. Is it a good thing you're playing Hoover in the second round? Is it a bad thing? It's usually been a bad thing for Hewitt Trustville, but both Vestavia and Hewitt have taken it to Hoover. Yeah, but you're a big assumption there that Hoover's going to beat James Clemens. I don't think they'll get out of the first round even if they make it. Very well could happen, but right. I think either way – You'd rather play James Clemens or Hoover right there than Thompson, right. who Thompson's currently playing Florence. Hewitt Trussell would have to go to Spartman the way it currently is. But then if Vestavia or Hewitt, by winning this game, if you could get Thompson in the semifinals at that point, or maybe even be lucky and have an upset somewhere in there. But if you get him in the semifinals, you've got an extra game of wear on the team. You know, you, you just you hope that you can get to that point to where 
not only are you playing them again and have a rematch again, especially if Vestavia, who had a chance to win that game, but you're doing it to go to the Super 7. So uh, big matchup there between Vestavia and Hewitt Trustville right now. Tied for second in 7A Region 3. The winner will be second. The loser will be third. Thompson, meanwhile, they're number one. They have all but locked up first. All they have to do is beat Oak Mountain this week, who has not won a region game. They're one and six overall, and then beat Tuscaloosa County next week or Hoover the next week. You don't have to win both of those technically. You only got to win two of the next three. Uh, but if you win the two before Hoover, you can go to the Hoover Met with absolutely nothing but a perfect region record on the line. You've already won the region championship. But we'll be at Oak Mountain calling that game. WarriorNationNetwork.org. Just click on the listen button if you want to listen. If you're a subscriber, or even if you're not, you'd like to subscribe to the uh, NFHS Network, you can watch it there by clicking on the watch button. By the way, our uh, production crew there at Thompson, absolutely amazing, led by Philip Pritchard with Video Visions Media Marketing. We have several cameras all over. We fly a drone every now and then. We got sideline cameras, just a wonderful production. A lot of people say that uh, it's the best in high school football. So if you've never watched a Thompson game with uh, with our crew, you can click on the Watch Now button. Yeah, NFHS Network, great value for all of high school sports to watch everything. And, of course, you can get all the Thompson games there as well. All right, Jerry, Week 7 coming up. Uh, we don't have the, the best game like we did last week, but like you said, we'll all be keeping an eye on that Hewitt Best Saving game and a lot of other games as well. For Jerry Ong, John Lunsford, this has been Next Round Preps. <laughs>